time when a lot of people are struggling, we still have something to smile about. We have plenty to be grateful for. And so as we start the year, I think if you are really grateful for what God has done for you, then you have a responsibility to make sure that you make the best of 2019. The best uh, person that you can be, the best contribution you can make to the world, yep. the best achievements that you can secure for yourself. So I'm really looking at sharing with you today. Today is a lecture, right? This is a lecture. Sometimes I have interactive sessions. This is a lecture I'm teaching you. So if you've got a notebook, <laughs> a pen and paper, then, or, or your notepad, whatever it is, get it. Because I'll be sharing a lot of useful, practical uh, know-how on goal setting, particularly to make 2019 a breakthrough year for you. And I would strongly advise you to write it down. In fact, if you write it down and you share it with me, I will select the top 10 people who will have sent me feedback that I'll work with for the next one month because it matters how you start. If you start your year on a high note, you have momentum and that momentum can carry you forward. So I'd like you to start the year with a bang. Start the year on a high note. So I'll give you my email address towards the end of the program. So listen right up to the end. And if you have been taking notes and you do the exercises that I will have asked you to do, and you send them back to me, I'll then select the top 10 out of the people who send me feedback and I'll work with you for at least one month, up to the 31st of January. Do we have a deal? Deal. Great. Maybe say nine because, you know, I've got my notebook and I've got my pen. Ah. Ready to roll. <laughs> hey, they are, they are exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> you are excluded. <laughs> right. So, um, do you have any question before I go further? No. Right. Let's so let's start. Into it. Let's start with the intro. On the intro, I just want to share three points that are like a preamble to what we're going to discuss. The first one is that your days are numbered. Your days are literally numbered. What do we mean by this? What we mean is that you've got a limited time within which to achieve whatever it is you've set out to achieve for yourself. Now, what tends to happen is most of us look at life as if we are going to live eternally. Almost everybody I've come across has got some plan of something that they intend to do someday. But because there isn't immediate feedback on this, there aren't immediate consequences for not taking your action, for, for not actioning your vision, you find a lot of us keep postponing it. Someday I will get around to it. Guess what? You're getting older. The hours are turning into days, the days into weeks, the weeks into months, the months into years. And this is another year gone. And honestly, if you look at yourself, to what extent have you lived your life with urgency when it comes to your dreams? So in terms of preamble, this is important to realize. Your days are numbered. In fact, I could go further and say that your dreams have a sell-by date. There are certain things you have to do by a certain time in your life. And you can't keep postponing them. You know, recently my brother went to Bahamas with his wife and he used to say, I don't want to go to Bahamas when I'm 90 and, and I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. So he was so, so thankful that he managed to go there on holiday when he's still able to walk and his energy and he's still in, in the prime of his life. So that's point number one in terms of intro. Your days, are, your days are numbered. Number two is the breakthrough concept. With the breakthrough concept, what we are saying is that Everyone achieves something. The fact that you are alive, there are things you are achieving. But with breakthrough, we are saying very few people dare to go to the outer limits of their capacity, of their capabilities. Very few people dare to break through, to do something that is significant, that is extraordinary, that takes you to the outer limits of the talents that God has given you, of the potential that you have. A lot of people are satisfied with the mundane, with the ordinary, and instead of pursuing that goal to get to the outer limits, to get out of their comfort zone, to achieve extraordinary things, they complain about how average their life is, but all their actions are simply supporting that average life with average achievement. So I'm asking you, to what extent do you set breakthrough goals? To what extent do you dare to dream, to plan, to act in such a way that your life radically changes in a better way? Right. So that is point number two in terms of preamble. Breakthrough concept. Those who embrace the breakthrough concept and they work towards it have got a higher probability of achieving it than those who don't. 
The third and final point in terms of my preamble to Breakthrough 2019 is responsibility. Ultimately, people who achieve extraordinary results take responsibility. What do I mean by responsibility? If you look at your life right now, look at what you achieved in 2018. To what extent do you accept that you are a result of the decisions you have made and the actions you have taken? Rather than blaming somebody else, it doesn't matter. You could say, no, the economy went bad and things went down south. It was downhill. But ultimately, that is not only affecting you, it's affecting others. And if others were in exactly the same situation as you are, are achieving better results, then you better get real and accept that you are responsible. That's the starting point. As long as you are, using, you are suffering from a disease that I call excusitis, you will not achieve breakthrough. As long as you're finding somebody to, to blame, oh, it's because I've got a little newborn baby and I can't do any work because it... Okay, I'm talking about myself. And I'm having sleepless nights. Like Tafazo Mkoi's book says, exit your excuses. Exactly. Exit your excuses. Coach Taff said it right. So here is the thing. To what extent are you accepting responsibility? This preamble is important because it puts you in the right space, in the right environment. If you really want to achieve breakthrough in 2019, Number one, you need to realize your days are numbered. So there's a sense of urgency. Number two, you need to embrace the breakthrough concept where you're actually pursuing big, hairy, audacious goals. You dare step out of the mundane, the ordinary, uh, the boring, but you are daring to do things that, that are somewhat risky in that you just might fail. And most of us can't stand failure. And number three, you have to accept responsibility. You have to say that, I am responsible for the success or the failure that I've achieved or that I'm achieving. And by the end of 2019, whatever I'll have achieved depends to a great extent on the decisions that I make and the actions that I take. So that's the preamble. Shall I move on? Please. Right. It's a lecture, right? It's a lecture, right. Yeah. And if you've got questions, please send questions. What is our uh, WhatsApp number? 0775-897-897-0775-897-897. We are looking at Breakthrough 2019. Right. So here's the thing. A lot of people will say this subject of goal setting is a tired subject. I've heard it so many times. And right. Okay. What you're saying might be making sense, but it just doesn't shake me into action. Can you tell me something different? Can you tell me something that will kickstart me? So here, here is the thing. I like to call a spade a spade. I want to share with you three points about the mindset of achieving breakthrough that of critical importance. The first one is obsession. Now, a lot of people will talk about passion. You must be passionate about your goals. <laughs> you must be committed. But I'm saying no. You need to go beyond that. You need to be obsessed with your idea. You know what obsession is? You are fixated. You've got this idea that seizes your mind, that is at the top of your mind at all times. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, throughout the day, when you're working, when you're eating, when you're sleeping, when you go to the loo, this idea is at the top of your mind. You become obsessed with it, almost like some of those absent-minded professors. So if you find that you are pursuing a goal that has this grip on you, your chances of succeeding and achieving that breakthrough are significantly high. So I'm asking you right now, yeah, the subject of goal setting might be boring, but let's talk about you as an individual. To what extent are you obsessed? Are you committed in a manner where we could say you are actually crazy about your idea? To what extent are you crazy about your idea? Give yourself a mark, maybe on a scale of 1 to 10. Looking at 2018, what was the biggest idea, goal that you were pursuing? And to what extent were you obsessed by it? That is number one. This is the mindset of somebody who achieves breakthrough. When you've got that mindset, you are obsessed. And people actually say, gosh, you're really crazy about this stuff, right? Number two, in terms of mindset, you need to have the Malcolm X attitude. Malcolm X was a civil rights movement leader in the U.S. during the civil rights movement era, during the time of uh, Martin Luther King. And he's renowned, or one of the most common phrases or statements, quotable quotes from him is, by any means necessary. necessary. Now, when you find that you are so committed to achieving your goal that you say, I'll do it by any means necessary. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, I will get there. Then you're halfway there. 
because that is the attitude that will give you will to your engine even when the times are hard even when you meet obstacles even when you have got speed bumps potholes along the way you will find a way because you're saying i'll do it by any means necessary there is absolutely no room for you to have an excuse or for you to blame somebody you are totally absolutely completely responsible now there is always a provision to this i always say by any means necessary without violating principle don't do anything illegal, immoral, or sinful in the process, okay? But that is a mindset of somebody who achieves breakthrough. Number one, you are obsessed with your idea. You will do it. You, it it's constantly at the top of your mind. You're acting on it every single day. And you know, with obsession comes intensity. You are doing whatever you're doing to a greater effort than you have ever done before. You're putting more effort into it. You're putting more time. You're putting more energy. You are putting more focus as well. That's part of obsession. When you're really obsessed with something, you're concentrating on it to an extent that all your focus is directed towards it. Number two, Malcolm X. You need to say, I'll do it by any means necessary without violating principle. Number three, the last one on the mindset of achieving breakthrough is the Kaizen principle. Kaizen principle comes from the Japanese and this is continuous improvement. There is no room for an inflated ego if you really want to achieve the success you yes. desire. Because when you have an inflated ego, it closes your mind. You will not accept areas where you have shortcomings, where you need to learn, where you need to improve, because your ego won't allow you. It's okay, I'm good. Is these clowns working for me that are making a mistake? Uh, it's the market. It's, it's the people don't appreciate the genius of my idea. No, you need to have humility. And with that humility, you are able to practice Kaizen. To say, whatever I'm doing, let me look at what I need to improve. What are the areas I can improve on? And this you can immediately start applying even as you review 2018. And say, in 2018, what was the level of obsession or commitment that I had towards my plan on a scale of 1 to 10? To what extent did I abide by Malcolm X principle by any means necessary? Where I say, I will find a solution, whatever the problem, I'll find a solution. Give yourself a mark on a scale of 1 to 10. To what extent did I practice Kaizen? Where I looked at what do I need to do to improve myself? Where am I going wrong? What lessons is life teaching me? What are my failures saying about me, about my strengths, about my weaknesses, about my habits? What is it that I need to change even in terms of my attitude? So all that comprises the preamble. We looked at the intro. We looked at the mindset of goal setting. And with that, I'm ready to go straight into goal setting. Uh, before we get into goal setting, Miss Sunshine comes through and she says, I'm so crazy sometimes, um, uh, a lot of the times, but at times you feel like it's not going to work. But I am totally sold out. I'm obsessed. All right. In Miss Sunshine. It's Miss Sunshine. Miss Sunshine. Miss Sunshine, listen and listen carefully. Right. This reminds me of my... <laughs> Oh, of my uh, niece who was saying, listen, Linda. Have you seen that little clip? There's yes, a clip that made yes, around the Linda. WhatsApp. <laughs> so listen, Linda. Listen, Sunshine. Here is the thing. You can only be in one state of mind at any moment. Are you listening to me? You can only be in one state of mind at a moment. So, for example, I, I normally give this example because it's so graphic. If you're in a state of gratitude, you cannot be in a state of misery. When you say, I'm really thankful to God for A, B, C, D. You cannot be complaining at the same time. The two cannot coexist in the same mind at the same time. No. So here's the thing. During those moments when you find yourself saying, I don't think I can do it. You will have slipped and allowed your mind to dwell on negativity. It means there are moments when you let go of that crazy obsession with your idea. And you know, the best way to make sure that you stay in that zone. That, 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 that zone of, of I can do it, that zone of the outer limits, the best way to do it is to attack. Keep taking action. The moment you feel discouraged that something is going wrong, think of an action, take that action immediately. Because with action comes momentum. When you have momentum, it's very difficult for people to stop you because you are moving. It's difficult for negativity to stop you. And when your mind is seized with the plan, with the idea, with the action you are taking, you cannot then say, I don't think it will work because you are seized with the idea. Let me give you an example. So supposing I, I look at my business and say, you know, my business is going slow. You know, I'm in the business of helping people. Whether I work with companies, I do strategic planning, I do team building, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I say, things are not going well. 
The next thing I need to do is to come up with a plan to attack. And that attack might be to say, when I go on radio next time, I'm going to make an offer. And out of that offer, I'll get 10 people. I'll get maybe 100 people writing to me. I'll choose the top 10 people, start working with them, show them the value that I can provide. And at the end of one month, say to them, if you want to continue with this for three more months, you pay so much. Right? My mind is now seized with the idea. Correct. Are we together? Correct. And this is how products such as Action Zone came about. So even in your line of work, I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you are into selling. Maybe you, I don't know, manufacturing something. Whenever you feel negativity, go on the attack. That is the best. Attack. T attack. Take action to move you forward. Don't sit there and wait for things to get better and to improve. No, they won't. Things won't change unless and until you make them change. All right. Glory in Newlands says uh, what sir is saying there is absolutely right. Obsession is what I call drive. Having a great zeal. Attitude is what I call discipline. Thank you so much for coming through. And please lecture my El Shaddai from Wablawayo. And someone is asking uh, for you to go back to the point that we shared on responsibility. Right. On responsibility, what I said was that uh, as an intro, to this talk, there are three points I shared. I said, number one, your days are numbered, so you must have urgency towards your goals. Start working on them now. The year might look long, but believe me, it goes through, go, goes, we go through it very fast. Number two, breakthrough concept. Think of your idea, dare to dream big and to act big. And on responsibility, I say, accept that what you are today, whether you are happy with it or not happy with it, is largely to do with the decision that you have made and the actions that you have taken so you only have you to blame or you to praise and thank yes i know god helps us all equally but when you find you are decelerating whilst others are accelerating yeah. then there's got to be a responsibility that you accept so that's what i said on responsibility all right, right. let's get into it goal let's setting. get into it goal setting i'll simplify this i'll look at goal setting uh in terms of four stages and we call these the four D's. These are actually derived from a framework called appreciative inquiry. The first D is discover. So if you're writing it down, write discover. That's the first D. The second D is dream. The third D is design. And the final D is deliver. So let's discuss these one at a time. And as we discuss this, I'm actually giving you instructions on what you can do right now or immediately after the show in order to apply what we have discussed in your life and come up with a plan for your breakthrough in 2019. So if we look at the first D, you need to discover. By discovering, we are saying that in order for a doctor to prescribe medication, that doctor must first of all do a diagnosis and know exactly what the current situation is. If you want to travel from where you are to your vision, to your goal, you need to start by looking at where exactly am I? Because I can't give you directions. For, okay, can you give me directions to, um, uh, let's say, uh, Karigamombe, right? And I say, where are you right now? You're like, I don't know. I can't mm. give you directions. Yeah. Because you don't know where you are. So by discovering, we say, let's look at where you are right now. And how do we do this? Number one, I would like you to reflect on 2018. Are you listening to me? Reflect on 2018. Number one, did you have plans at the beginning of the year? And if so, what were your successes? Simple. My successes, my major successes in 2018 were one, two, three. Let's keep it to the top three. Write down the top three successes that you achieved in 2018. Number two. Still on discovery. Write down the lessons that you learned in 2018. What are the major lessons you have learned? And most of those lessons, mind you, come from our failures. Wherever you didn't achieve what you'd set out to achieve, you need to look at yourself and say, what is the lesson that I've learned? So that in 2019, you are actually building on the lessons that you learned previously. There's a lot more we can do in terms of discovering, but I want to keep this short, sweet, simple. As a starting point, write down your major successes for 2018. Write down the major lessons that you learned in 2018. Are we together? Sure. If you want to get really fancy, you could use the cash model, but I'm not going to go through that. Cash is K-A-S-H, mm -hmm. which stands for knowledge, attitude, skills, and habits. But that's 
for another for another day. So having done that, having looked at uh, your successes and the lessons you have learned, I want you to also come up with what you consider to be your three biggest strengths from your review of 2018, the successes that you managed to achieve and the lesson that you learned. What are the three strengths you say, I possess these strengths? Why do I want this? Because you can only excel when you maximize on your strengths. Maximizing on your strengths means deriving the most from those strengths, enhancing yourself in terms of the knowledge, the attitude, the skills, the habits, but building on what you already possess. Let's move on to the second D. The second D is dream. Now, this is critical. Most people don't know what they want. Listening to me right now, you probably think you know what you want. I bet my bottom dollar that 99% of the people listening to this cannot articulate clearly without using an um, ah, uh, perhaps, maybe, God willing, exactly what they desire in 2019. What is your goal in 2019? What is your vision? This is where we talk vision. We haven't even gone to goals. But this is, it we're enough? Talking. is it enough to know what It's a starting point. Want. It's a starting point. Okay. It's All a right. critical starting point. Great. Because here's the thing. Um, it has been found through numerous experiences that what we create in life, what we manifest, depends on what goes on in our mind. We form an impression of the picture of the success we want to do. And then we impress that upon our conscious mind by deliberately clarifying it, by maybe repeating it, doing spaced repetition, by saying it out, by memorizing it, by writing it down, and by making sure that it's energized through emotion. So if you've got a vision and that vision affects you emotionally, I really am going to achieve this. By the way, I don't accept it when somebody, when I ask you, what is your vision for 2019? And somebody says, I want to build a house. No! I want, will. want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> want is lacking. It's like I don't have. Yep. You will not manifest abundance when you're lacking. So you should actually dare to say, I will. I will. I will build this house by 30. 30th of September 2019. There's a whole world of difference in those words. So, I might, I could. All that speaks doubt. But is it not because people have planned, they have had uh, breakthrough goals, and uh, things didn't happen, and then because they have spoken about it and they were quite firm and assertive on their goals. Uh, people then look at them and say, but, but exactly, because it's been Ayo, seven years I, in Bayapuerpa window. Ayo, I'm not saying share this with anyone at this point, you're talking to yourself. However, think about it the people who have achieved extraordinary success. I could give you tired examples like uh, the guy who invented the light bulb, Thomas Edison. They say he tried 10,000. 10,000 materials before he discovered the tungsten filament that was used in the classic light bulb that he made, electric light bulb. So I'm saying, yes, you might have tried seven times, etc. Giving up does not ensure you succeed. <laughs> you know, once you give up, that's it. So I'm saying, once you're in the fight and you realize that, you see, life tests you. Your success is a result of passing the test of life. And usually, usually you find that it's only in the dictionary where results come before work. You do the work, and then eventually get the results. And most people we know of who have achieved extraordinary success did not get it on a silver platter. Met initially with failure. So I'm saying it depends on you. If you are really small and scared and afraid of failure, then don't even bother to listen to what I'm saying. Because this, this challenges you. I have failed many times. You know, I tell people about the biggest failure I had way back in 2003 when I went for the World Championship of Public Speaking. And whilst I was there, two days before the show, the, the, the contest, I phoned my boss and said, I'm resigning from my job because I'm going to win the World Championship and I'll be in demand to speak all over the world. Wow. And after the competition, I was the first person to phone back home and say, may I have my job back because I would come third instead of first. And, and I'd stake everything on winning. Right? Almost like gambling. But I'm saying that should not stop you. Right? Failure should not Failure stop you. Failure is the breakfast of champions. Come on. Right? That tests you. And are you passing or failing the test? So you need to be clear. And, and you need to say what your dream is. Write down in very clear language, maybe one or two sentences, maximum three sentences. I will do this, this. What is the biggest goal, the breakthrough goal, the vision you have for 2019? 
So what's important there is writing it down. It's important to write it down. It's clarity. Very, be very clear. Articulation. You must be able to articulate it, if not to anyone else, but to yourself. And if you can consistently articulate it from the 1st of January, you see, each time, here's the thing, each time you, you, you say that goal and you are involved in it emotionally, there's something that happens inside of you. There's a certain amount of discomfort that is created. Why? Because it, it's, it's what they call dynamic tension. It's between what you are saying uh, consciously and what you are, where you are right now subconsciously. You know, I'm saying I have or I will have this house or this place or I'll have attached the lives of 10,000 people. And your conscious mind is saying, no, no, no wait, wait a minute. You, you, you're only reaching like 1,000 people right now. But that tension can only be resolved in one of two ways. Either you give up on your plot so that there's no more tension. Yeah, I'm say, I'm happy where, or no, not necessarily happy. I'm accepting where I am. I know I can't do any further than this for whatever reason. Or you start taking action to move you towards that vision you've got. So that clarity is important. What is it that I want to do? Articulate it. Create that impression on your, on your brain, on, on, your, on your mind, and take action. But how, how do you pace yourself? when it comes to this uh, dynamic tension that you're talking about. Because now I think that there will be, or there is a thin line between uh, the, the necessary discomfort to get to the next level and stress. Ah, uh, let me tell you, when you're obsessed, there is stress. <laughs> <laughs> there is stress. <laughs> there is stress, okay. but, but here, here is the thing. There are two types of stresses. When you're stressed about something that you can change you can resolve that so for example if you've got a deadline you know you need to do the submit this assignment on such a date you feel stressed about it because you're not working on it but the moment you start working on it you relieve the stress the moment you start taking action you relieve it. the moment you attack you are relieving that stress so it's fine it's good to have stress you must have positive stress it's like a string in a guitar for it to produce the best music it needs a certain amount of yeah. tension in it not too much because it snaps not too little because it won't produce any sound. So, oh my word, we're running out of time here. So listen, the next thing is design. With design, you need to search smart goals. Very important, smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound. And lastly, deliver. You need to take action, have accountability, maybe an accountability partner, and reinforce. Oh my word, we haven't concluded everything I want to say. So listen, if you take notes from what, if you took notes from what I said, and if you are setting a plan for yourself, you've been reviewing yourself and writing what I'm saying, I want you to send it to jmongoshi at gmail.com. I'll choose the best 10 responses that I get, and I'll work with those people for the rest of the month. jmongoshi at gmail.com. I wish you breakthrough in 2019, and it won't come by luck, but it comes by the decisions you take and the actions you take. Thank you so much, Jonah. And also, in the words of uh, the late Bruce Lee, he says, don't fear failure, not failure, but low aim is the crime. In great attempts, it's glorious even to fail. Star FM sounding good all the time. It is 10 o'clock and it's time for the news.